Hey folks, Roller Martin here. Well, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, listen, I, I'm going to try to show you something, a real how-to deal on flipping and pitching. I'm, I'm up in Minnesota, but I'm a power fisherman. I fish heavy jigs and I fish all these heavy reeds. I fish Florida, I fish Connecticut, I fish California. It's the same basic principle. Pitching up here in the north is just exactly like pitching down in Lake Okeechobee, my, my home state of Florida. But I want to show you how to do it. First, I want to get set up. Here's my setup for my good pitching rod. This is a big 7 and a 7.4 big heavy duty rod. It's a big flipping stick. It's heavy action. It's really, really heavy action. And I have this UG button on the back. That UG button really is nice for anchoring it into my stomach and really winching those fish out. Now, this is that Emperor series by, by Favorite. It's a really heavy, heavy, heavy duty rod. That's what you need. Okay. Coupled up with that is 65 pound test braid. That is heavy, heavy, heavy line, but I'm in some heavy stuff right here, and I'm going to show you real quick. Now, let's get this jig ready. This is a three-quarter ounce jig, and it's a big heavy-duty jig. I've taken the tail, the trailer, and I'm going to just dip it just a little bit in the die just to accent a little bit of color. I like to have a little bit of color. I'm just going to dip it down in the die just a tad, okay? That's good. It's a good little dip right there. That's fine. That's all I need, okay? The next thing, magic marker. Hey, I want to make that line just a little darker. So I'm going to just take this line and I'm going to take a magic marker. And in many cases, I can use that, uh, the spike it makes a product that's uh, even better than this just magic marker. But anyway, magic marker will work. And I'm going to take my pen, my magic marker pen, and I'm going to go right on this line. And I'm just going to darken it. I'm going to darken it for about a foot foot and a half, two foot, whatever. Just make it all black. You know, I wish they made a real black uh, line. I just, they don't really make a black line that, that, that I don't know, that they make a black uh, uh, braid. Braid, it, also, th remember, this is braid. You can't, you can't do with anything but braid. You can't do this with 20 pound monofilament. You can't get the fish out. Okay, now here's my deal. Let me just show you what I'm doing. I don't know if I'll catch a fish here. I'm probably going to have to move to the other side of the lake. I'm going to take my jig and I'm going to pitch. I'm going to pitch in those reeds. And to pitch, how you do it is you put the line about the length of the rod or the length of the reel, about the length of the reel. Put the lure about the length of the reel. Grab it with your left hand. And I'm going to swing it. I'm just going to swing it forward. Just going to swing it and let it go, okay? Just, so I'm just going to see those reeds right there. I'm going to go about three or four foot back in the reeds. Let it down, let it down. Be a line watcher. Be a line watcher. Pump it up once. Pump it up twice. Swim it out of there. Don't spend any time. Here's the deal. There's a lot of reeds. There's only two or three bass along here. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time flipping in one spot. I'm going to flip there real quick, flip there real quick. With my 10 foot ahead, flip there real quick. I'm going to come up ahead five or six more feet. Flip in there about two or three or four feet back in there. Let it sink. Be a line watcher. Have this rod anchored in my stomach. It's anchored right down here. Okay. Okay. Didn't hit it. Okay. I'm going to reel it in. Reel it in. Get ready. It's five or six more feet. Back in there. Back in there. Okay. Get the rod ready. I got the rod ready. It's in the strike position. I'm not going to let them take it. This isn't like, this isn't like worm fishing. This isn't like worm fishing. This is, this is jig fishing. And jig fishing is when they hit the thing, you hit them. There's no two or three second deal. Nothing like that. You just flip it in. And again, two or three, two or three clips out of there. Okay. A little bit farther back. Okay. I can go 30 or 40 feet. But now there's one disadvantage of, of flipping and pitching way out. And that's, you got a lot more stuff to, to go through. So sure. I mean, I could, I could go pitch. Look at this. I can go, I can go 40 foot back in there. And pitch. But number one, the, pro the fish are probably on the edge. That's the first thing. Number two, if I got one, I don't know if I can get them out. I, didn't, I said not to do that, but I did it anyhow. And here's what you need 65 pound braid for. You need 65 pound braid to pull it loose of the, pull it out. That's why you need a 65 pound braid. 
and that's a big old nice bass. Look at the size of him. That's what we're talking about, son. That is pitching at its finest. I was gonna say, we probably don't need to go way back in there. And I went way back in there and I caught one. And I was gonna tell you that I probably don't wanna go way back in there because <laughs> by going way back in there, <laughs> look at that big old three or something, big old giant bass. Fish. I, would, I really didn't expect him. I didn't really even, even, even figure I was going to catch one. I just wanted to show you the proper technique. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm showing you the proper technique. But number one, let's figure this out. That fish would have never, never been caught on anything less than 65 pound braid. He was 30, 40 foot back in there in those heavy reeds. We'll try that again. That was something. I just pitched it back in there. Nice long pitch. Oh, that, no, I didn't get there. Hey, how you doing? Very impressive. Good. Nice job. Thank you. You make it look so easy. Well, it's not always that easy. <laughs> so maybe so maybe there are fish way farther back in there. I don't know. I just I just went back way back in that one just to try it. And when I when I turned to the camera to talk to it, the line took off. So that is uh, by far a lucky deal. So, but hey, you know, fishing's luck. Let me let me just tell you about luck. Luck. Oh, here that was a lucky deal. I was just I was just trying to explain how to catch them, and I caught one. That's luck. Okay. But if you're prepared, if you're a pattern fisherman like I am, I got all the right stuff. I mean, I got the right knot. I got the right line. I got the right thing. And luck will come by once or twice a day unbeknown to me or anybody else, it's just going to happen. Some luck, and if you're properly prepared and fishing the proper pattern like I'm doing now, it's going to pay off. Luck is going to be a big factor. It's going to come right into it as the luck, as the luck occurs. You capitalize on it. Not capitalize on that luck. Hey, it was, I caught one. Pitched it in there. Didn't do much. Boy, he just took off with it. He just took off with it. Another big deal when you're pitching, it's really a big deal, since this is the how-to format, I'm going to tell you all the big deals that we need to do. We're, we're number one, we need to be real quiet. Have to not make a lot of noise with the trolling motor. I'm pitching with that jig and I'm going along slow and easy. And I'm pitching back in those reeds. Uh, he was farther back than I thought he'd be, so I'm going to have to keep trying some, some back in there. I got the tackle to do it with. And I got this reel really locked down with a tight, tight drag. I mean, that's the other part of it. You got to have a reel, and this is a heavy-duty casting reel by Bass Pro Shop. But, but I got the drag locked down. The drag is tight, tight, tight. And I'll be able to really winch them out of there. Throw it back in there. Okay, people, people hear all the sorts of things of pitching and flipping, and what's the difference? Well. I'm pitching. I'm taking the, the lure and pitch, swinging it out and pitching it. To flip it, it's different. Watch this. Watch what I do when I flip. I'm not going to be doing much flipping today. But I do, I keep the lure about to the end of the rod, about, about here. About, about, about. And I take my line now and I pull it off the reel, still keeping that line. See, I have about three foot there and six foot there. And now I can swing the whole thing out there and let that go. That's, that's flipping. The advantage with flipping, it's a shorter distance that you go. But I got one. But it's called quiet presentation. That's the other advantage about flipping. I caught that one flipping because the jig went in more quiet. And I think that was the reason why I caught that fish. I'd already fished there. I'd already pitched in there. But with trouble with your pitch, Sometimes the lure kind of splashes in the water on a, on, a, on a pitch. Whereas a flip, you can control that. Again, on a flip, you can pull the line out and be real quiet. It just, they, it, they didn't even hear it hit the water. It's just a real quiet presentation. Jig it up a couple times. Jig it up a couple times. That's, that's flipping. But the disadvantage here, 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 here are the two basic deals. Flipping is a better, 
Flipping is a more quiet presentation and it's very effective, but it's for close range. It's only good for 20 something feet. If I want to go 30 or 40 feet, I have to pitch. And I don't have much choice. It's the lure is going to come down and make a, a little bit of a splash, but I can't flip that far. So, so pitching is part of it. You know, in this case, because there's reed beds are so wide and big, I'm going to have to do a lot of pitching to get there. But if I were going down a shoreline and it was just an occasional log or occasional little clump of grass or occasional little ambush point like that, I could flip to that very quietly and very effectively. A little bit closer range, but, but a very effective presentation. <clears throat> oh, it's getting warm, son. This is, this is up about, it's about 10 o'clock. Now let me tell you something about the time of day. Sometimes the pitching and flipping bites better in the midday because what the, what the pitching and flipping accomplishes is they're getting in the shade and cover of this heavy overhead head stuff. They're getting in there because of the sun, because of the bright sun and all. They're, uh, they're, in, the, uh, they're in the reeds, okay? Well, sometimes that's best between like 10 o'clock and two o'clock in the afternoon. Some of the best fish I've ever caught have been midday flipping and pitching the heavy cover. Now the heavy cover could be that boat dock. It could be a tree that a beaver cut down. Heavy cover, of course, we know it's these reeds. Heavy covers anything. A lot of times there's a big flood in the Midwest and big lakes like Table Rock and all these leaves will come in the water and just a big flood and the wind will push all these leaves over to the shoreline and there'll be sticks and leaves and old Coke cans and whatever trash floating. Perfect place to flip and pitch. It's overhead cover. And that's kind of what we're looking for today. Okay, so now it's warmed up a little bit, a little bit of cloud cover some. I can pitch and flip. I'm flipping there, that's a flip. That's a flip, I'll kind of dem demonstrate the two techniques, the flipping and pitching. I'm gonna go real quiet, hardly any movement with the trolling motor, just silent, quiet power. Oh, there's one. Oh, son, I don't know it's a, what it is. Big old bass, son. This guy, that's a bass and a half. Oh, big old bass. Look at that. He took it like a crazy man. He took it like a crazy man. That's a good bass. I'm just, just out of curiosity. So many of these fish are nice and fat and heavy like this. And I just want to see how heavy he is. 401. Okay, he's a four pounder. Hey, you know, that's not bad for up here in, in northern Minnesota. I mean, we're, we're way up near it. We're just a little ways from the Canadian border. And these big fish, and look at, look at, I want to show you something. He tore loose. He almost tore the jig loose. He had a great big spot torn in his jaw. And another thing, look, I caught him there. Here's another deal. That's where he's been caught another time. So see, catch and release really works. If somebody who'd caught them there had kept them, of course, I wouldn't have caught this four pound bass. And this four pound bass is probably 10 years old. So it, it would be a long time in recruiting another one. So the concept of, of, of letting the little ones grow to be big ones and just keep the big ones, that's all wrong. The concept that the right way to do it is throw all the big ones back because it takes so long to recruit these big fish back into the system that you, if you want to eat fish, eat the little ones. Don't eat the big ones. Okay, that's my conservation for the day. Let's let them go. The thicker clumps, the thicker clumps of grass are part of the deal. Now there's a little shade right here coming from that tree. So I'm gonna try that. This little point of shade. I'm gonna pitch right over there, like about there. Watch my line. You know, the more inquisitive you are with all the different water and cover conditions, in other words, thinking about the wind, thinking about the water clarity, thinking about the water temperature, all those factors, the more you, you deal with them, the, the, the clearer the picture is. And uh, I'm going to stop right quick. And so as a pattern fisherman, I'm thinking all the time about about 10 different things. I mean, which way is the wind blowing? Which way is the sun? Which way is... How, 
you know, the exact water clarity, every, every kind of thing I'm just thinking all the time about, just constantly. <clears throat> Strike. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, good fish. Good fish. Good fish. Ah, that's what we're talking about, folks. That's what we're talking about. Big old bass. Big old bass. Big old bass. Big old four and five pounders. Big old five pound fish. What a beautiful bass. That's what it's all about, folks. Big old fish like this. I'm gonna put, a, put him on the scale real quick just to see. Almost, he's four and a half. He's four and a half pounds. He's just a beauty. Okay, boys, let this one go. Beautiful, beautiful bass. Beautiful, beautiful bass. Okay. Strike. Strike. Okay. Okay, now we're talking. Big old bass. Big old bass. Big old right out of there. That's what it takes. And because it's a heavy tackle, we can take this big old four pounder and run out of the water with it, son. That's what we're talking about. That is flipping at its best. I'm gonna take the power pole down. I just wanna tell you folks, it's been really great working with you guys. I love doing these how-to videos. They're really kind of fun. And it's my, it's my forte. It's, it's what I like to do the best. Now that, that fish was just so characteristic. He was back in there about 10 or 15 feet. I let him take it just a second to make sure it was a fish. When I set the hook, I had that, I had that ug button right in my stomach. I had all that power. And I, with that 65 pound line, he came right out of there. We've caught a couple nice ones today, folks. So I want to tell you, power fishing is great from Connecticut to California, Canada. I don't care where you are. It's the same great technique. You can use it in your local lake. I know you can find heavy cover to flip with. So remember, you can catch some beautiful bass with the flipping and pitching technique. Okay, I post every Wednesday about six o'clock and I post every Sunday about six o'clock and there may be a little chat in between. So I hope you subscribe because I really need the subscriptions and uh, I love doing this, but it's all, subscriptions are a big deal for me. I just really want to get some numbers up. And uh, I hope to be back in just a few days and do another how-to video for you guys. Thanks for watching.